So this week, I want to focus on some interesting talking points that are coming out about the upcoming Supreme Court decision upon same-sex marriage. Unless you've been living under a rock, you know that this month, the Supreme Court is going to rule on whether to strike down state laws that ban same-sex marriage and would open the floodgates, allowing same-sex marriage all across the country. And this is a very closely watched Supreme Court decision for obvious reasons, especially in the faith community. But as a Christian believer and someone who holds to the teachings of Jesus and believes the words of Jesus, I have been so disappointed in the public discourse coming from people who claim to follow Christ, especially on this particular topic. Let me give you one example. This example is from Cal Thomas. This is an interview on Fox News, and he's being asked about this upcoming same-sex Supreme Court decision, and he makes this same tired argument that is so often used by many people within the religious right. I'll play it for you, and then I'll break it down. Let's roll the tape. Uh, I think a lot of evangelical leaders are are looking at this as inevitable, that the Supreme Court will, in fact, strike down laws uh, restricting uh, marriage uh, between men and women. But I think what the court has to do then, if it's going to do this, is say, okay, where is the line then? If equal protection uh, covers gays, lesbians, transgenders, and the rest, uh, what about the polygamists? Some of their groups have already said that after same-sex marriage is approved, they want polygamy approved. And even further out, uh, the adult child marriage people people, uh, men especially, who want to marry young boys or young girls, as occurs in some Muslim countries, by the way, uh, they want their rights too. So who's going to say no and based on what? Okay, so some of you who are listening, of course, there's probably people on both sides in our audience now. Some of you who say, you know, I'm anti same-sex marriage and what Cal Thomas just said on Fox News makes perfect sense to me. I have, no pro- I have no problem with anything that he said. I can't imagine, Jerry, what problem you might have with what he said. And then those on the other side, those who are pro-same-sex marriage, are probably listening to this and thinking, okay, well, yeah, he's, a, he's your classic bigot. You know, he, he basically just doesn't want, you know, same-sex marriage to exist, and he doesn't want that to be a right for, you know, same-sex couples. And that really sums up, I would say, probably the two prevailing thoughts. You have for and you have against. But I'm going to tell you something. I, I take issue with this as a follower of Christ, as a believer in the Bible. I take issue with what Cal Thomas has to say, because here's the problem. His argument is that if same-sex marriage is made legal, that polygamists are going to want the same rights. Now, the reason why that offends me as a person and as a Christian is because the Bible itself condones polygamy in the Old Testament. And, you know, this is very, very well known. Polygamy was a common practice in the Bible. Abraham, Jacob, Ezra, Gideon, Hosea, shall I go on? Joash, Moses, Eliphaz, Caleb, Issachar, Rehoboam. I mean, there are at least 40 different individuals in the Old Testament that practiced polygamy. And when you are trying to make an argument for quote unquote traditional marriage, and your argument is that same sex marriage may lead to another practice that is actually in the Old Testament and is practiced by the heroes of faith, Abraham, Jacob, as I mentioned, David, Solomon, then what kind of argument is that? You know, let me just give you a couple of verses here. Exodus 21 verse 10 says that if a man who has married a slave wife takes another wife for himself, he must not neglect the rights of the first wife to food, clothing, and sexual intimacy. That is part of the Mosaic law. So, in essence, you have here written and codified in the Old Testament this concept of polygamy. We learn in 2 Samuel 5, 13, 1 Chronicles 3, 1 through 9, and 14, verse 3, that King David had at least six wives, and he had numerous concubines. In fact, I want to read you this particular passage from 2 Samuel chapter 12, uh, verse, uh, we'll start with verse 7, and we'll go through a couple of verses here. It says, Nathan said to David, now Nathan was a prophet, and Nathan said to King David, you are the man, thus says the Lord God of Israel. Okay, so what's getting ready to be said was said by God himself through the man Nathan, the prophet Nathan. Here's what he says. I anointed you, David, king over Israel, and I delivered you out of the hand of Saul, and I gave you your master's house, and I gave you your master's wives into your arms, and gave you the house of Israel and Judah. Okay, so in this verse, God is literally saying through Nathan to David, I gave you many wives. 
Now listen to what the next part of the verse says. And if this were too little, I would add to you as much more. So in effect, God is saying to David through the prophet Nathan, if you wanted more wives, I would have given you more. In other words, the wives are considered in this verse a blessing. Now, how do you reconcile that? How does the Bible reconcile that? How does Cal Thomas reconcile that? By the way, when you hear the Bible talk about concubines, a concubine in this ancient time was a female who voluntarily enslaved herself and sold herself to a man primarily for his sexual pleasure. We read in 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 3, that King Solomon had 700 wives and 300 concubines, and he was the king of Israel known as the wisest man who ever lived. In 2 Chronicles 11, verse 21, we read about King Solomon's son, Rehoboam, who had 18 wives and 60 concubines. So what am I saying? Am I saying that I think polygamy should be legalized? No. My point is that if people like Cal Thomas are going to screech about traditional marriage and warn against polygamy, they should first at least attempt to reconcile what the Bible has to say about the matter. Otherwise, you come off looking like a fool. You come off looking like a complete idiot because you don't know your own Bible. The Old Testament is filled, as we can see, with instances of polygamy. And to this date, I have rarely, if ever, heard a good explanation as to why that exists in the Old Testament and why God permitted that practice. Because as has been stated, the Bible in the Old Testament never forbids the practice of polygamy, and through the Mosaic Law, as we read in Exodus, it even condones the practice, albeit with limits. So when unbelievers who know the Bible says this, and yet people who claim to be believers go on and act as if it is not in the Bible, that makes believers look really silly. It seems that most of these problems come whenever people try to get God off of the hook. As a follower of Christ, I don't believe my role is to get God off of the hook. I don't know why polygamy is in the Old Testament. I don't know why it appears there. I have no answer to that. And therefore, I'm not going to spend my time trashing people who may believe that to be a valid practice. My goal as a Christian is to follow Christ. And Christ's words are clear. He tells me to love the unlovable, to help the poor, to clothe the needy, and to share the good news. Not to spend my life trashing those who live lives that don't meet my own standards. If we could tone down the rhetoric on many of these culture war issues, and if Christians could stop pointing their fingers at every single person that they believe is a sinner, and could instead look at themselves in the mirror and think, how can I take care of the issues in my own life? I believe the world would be a much better place. And that's just something to think about.